Everybody has a hobby, and for some, it involves building airplanes in their garage. Ray Stitz and Robert Starr were two such people who drew upon their knowledge of fixing and flying aircraft in the military to become pioneers in the world of home-built aircraft. Along the way, they created some of the smallest aircraft ever built, aircraft that look more like go-karts than flying machines. Like many great stories, this one started with a bet. It was at Kellogg Field in Battle Creek, Michigan in the summer of 1948. Ray Stitz was repairing an aircraft at the Battle Creek Flying School and talking shop with his buddies when he asked a rhetorical question. If I was to build an aircraft with a 10-foot wingspan and a 10-foot fuselage, would it be the world's smallest airplane? Stitz asked. One self-proclaimed aviation expert said, Stitz, you can do it. And that was all the incentive he needed to finally start an aircraft project he had long thought about building. The race for the world's smallest airplane record started with Ray Stitz's desire to design an airplane smaller than Steve Whitman's DFA Midget Racer, which was previously the smallest airplane. His first design was the SA-1A Junior, which featured a wingspan of 8 feet 10 inches and a 40-horsepower engine from Aronka. The flight characteristics were terrible. Heavy wing loading, poor handling, and stall characteristics. You don't want to fly this plane. Junior was too small for Stitch to fly. Luckily, he found someone who could fit in the 15-inch wide cockpit. But the plane crashed after rising 10 feet off the ground. Not to be discouraged, Stitch switched the power plant to a 65-horsepower Continental engine, shortened the wings to 8 feet, and attached tip gates to generate more lift and better aileron control. In 1952, Robert Starr, a former P-51 pilot, joined the program, and they built a plane even smaller than Stitz's Jr. They called it the Sky Baby. The Sky Baby has a wingspan of 2 meters and is 3 meters long with conventional landing gear. The fuselage is constructed of welded steel tubing with aircraft fabric covering. It's a two-bay biplane, meaning it has double wings. The upper wing houses the flaps, while the lower wing houses the ailerons. Most aircraft use a flat firewall between the engine and the pilot's feet, but the Sky Baby is configured with the pilot sitting with the engine close to his lap. Honestly, I don't know what that must have felt like, but I know I wouldn't want an engine between my lap or anything close to my uh, factory. There were specific requirements for this plane. One of those was that its pilot must weigh 77 kilograms to guarantee that gravity was kept in the right place. In addition, since the small engine is modified to produce 112 horsepower, in order to land safely without the engine stalling, the approach speed must be maintained at 125 miles per hour or 108 knots when approaching the runway. The Sky Baby earned the Guinness World Record for the world's smallest plane in 1952. The last time I checked, the plane was being stored at the Boeing Aviation Hangar in Virginia, so you need to get there if you want to see it in person. The Sky Baby was Stitz's last attempt to build the smallest aircraft in the world. But Starr was unhappy because he felt he had not received proper credit for his help building the Junior and the Sky Baby. He wanted the record for himself, so he built the Bumblebee 1. With a wingspan as small as 2 meters, the plane claimed the Guinness World Record immediately as the smallest plane ever built. That same year, Ray Stitz's son, Donald Stitz, said, No, 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 I want that record back. So, 
He went on to build the Stitz Baby Bird, a high-wing monoplane that was completely different from anything that ever existed. The experimental creation had a tubular fuselage construction while its wing was made from wood. The Baby Bird was a success. It performed as many as 34 flights before retiring. But Robert Starr didn't want to lose the title to the Stitzes, so he went and designed the Bumblebee 2. The design of the Bumblebee 2 is similar to that of the Bumblebee 1, except the Bumblebee 2 is smaller and lighter. The fuselage of the Bumblebee 2 was constructed of welded steel tubing with sheet metal covering, while the wings were covered in aircraft plywood. The power plant was a Continental C85 four-cylinder engine that produced 85 horsepower. The upper wings had flaps and the lower wings had ailerons. All wing airframe structures were equipped with tip plates to enhance the lift coefficient. The airplane had a small cockpit with the rudder pedals located under the engine compartment toward the front of the cowling. The max speed of the plane was 130 knots and this little bee could soar to the skies, climbing 4,500 feet per minute. The smallest twin-engine airplane is the Colombon Cree Cree. Designed in the early 70s by French aeronautical engineer Michel Colombon, he wanted to design a small airplane that people could assemble at home with less than $1,000, including the engines, which is about $5,000 in today's money. Columban designed the kit to be simple, easy to build, and fly, and the closeness of the two engines to each other at the center line means that it could be flown by pilots only qualified to fly single-engine aircraft because even with a complete failure of one engine, with hands and feet off the controls, the only effect would be a gentle turn. The cockpit canopy was carefully designed to direct effective airflow over the tail surfaces in this situation. He not only designed it to be easy to build, but also easy to disassemble for those who wanted to store it in a garage and tow it on a trailer. It's so easy to assemble and disassemble that it can be done in under six minutes. The Cree Cree features a cantilever low wing, a single seat enclosed cockpit, fixed tricycle landing gear, and twin engines mounted on pylons at the nose of the aircraft in tractor configuration. It's made from aluminum sheets glued to Clegacel foam. Its wingspan is just 4.9 meters with a length of just 3.9 meters and it is capable of aerobatics within the limitations of twin-engine aircraft. It was powered by two 9-horsepower Rowena two-stroke engines, which helped the plane achieve a cruise speed of 108 knots or about 124 miles per hour. And that was on an airplane that weighed about 175 pounds and could lift a maximum of 200 pounds. In some of the later models, the IC engines were replaced with electric engines, which made the Cree Cree eco-friendly. Currently, the existing Cree Cree planes have often been modified by their builders, departing from the original design to varying degrees, resulting in varying performances. Most versions can climb with one engine inoperative. The smallest helicopter in the world is the Innovator Mosquito Air. It was introduced by Innovator Technologies of Canada to be the cheapest and easiest helicopter to fly, and it is supplied as a kit for amateur construction. The Mosquito Air was specifically designed to be simple, but intelligent and reliable, and also comply with the US FAR Part 103 ultralight category rules including the category's maximum empty weight of 254 pounds, meaning that you don't need a pilot license to fly it. It's powered by a two-cycle 64-horsepower piston engine featuring a single main rotor and tail rotor, a single-seat open cockpit without a windshield, and skid landing gear. The best thing is that the Mosquito offers an advantageous power-to-weight ratio 
a compact size, and easy maneuverability, allowing the user to fly as close to home as possible. It cruises at 60 miles per hour, climbs at 790 feet per minute, and has a range of 70 miles, making it perfect for sightseeing flights around your community. This is a true helicopter in every sense of the word, despite its very basic design. The open design means that the pilot is in maximum contact with the air, which is often reported to be a great experience. The kit for the Mosquito can be purchased for $20,000. Building the kits will take you about 200 to 300 hours, or you can have the plane built for you for a flat $4,000. Getting airborne for under $20,000 in your new helicopter is quite a feat. We're not aware of any other helicopter in this price category and, on top of that, it offers very low maintenance and operating costs. The smallest jet in the world is the BD BD-5 Micro. Work on the BD-5 started in the 70s when Jim Beattie wanted to build something radial after seeing the Schleicher ASW-15 and was inspired by it. The Micro was a radical design. It's an extremely small, one-seat design that looks like a fighter jet, with the pilot sitting in a semi-reclined position under a large, fighter-like canopy. To reduce drag, BD designed this plane to feature a V-tail and retractable landing gear. The result was that drag was so low that the plane needed split flaps and spoilers on the wing in order to improve deceleration for landing. This was apparently the first application of spoilers on a light aircraft. The low drag implied excellent performance. With the 40 horsepower engine, it reached nearly 200 miles per hour with a range of 1,200 miles. In addition to being fast and easy to fly, the BD-5 was also easy to build and maintain. The fuselage was constructed primarily from fiberglass panels over an aluminum frame, reducing construction time to only a few hundred hours. Although the early designs required some welding in the landing gear area, it was planned that this would be removed in the kit versions so construction would require no special tooling or skills. Even so, the cost of operation would be extremely low, offering fuel efficiency of 38 miles per gallon. With the wings removed, the aircraft could be packed into a small custom trailer, allowing it to be towed away by car for storage in a garage and from there to any suitable flat area for takeoff. If you like our videos, please smash the like and subscribe button. You can also join us by clicking on the link next to the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.